Hi, I'm Claire and this is my husband Nick. We met in an online chat room in 2001 and ended up getting married in 2006. We're a fairly normal, hard-working couple who love travelling and enjoying a drink or two. In early 2020, we decided we wanted a whole new life change and challenge. So we said goodbye to our jobs. We sold our Wiltshire farmhouse we packed up our things and made the move to France. In early 2001, I went back to the UK to finalise our house sale and pick up my Arga. I was on Facebook on an Escape to the Chateau fan club page when I saw this advert. I messaged Nick the advert, curiosity got the better of him and he went and arranged a viewing. With the instructions from me, I fixed your judgement. If you think I like it, put in an offer. The offer was accepted and we finally got the keys on the 10th of June 2021. Join us and our dogs, Mero and Flora, as we renovate our Maison de Maitre. So I thought I'd make a start on fitting the windows today. Um, the first thing I've done is removed the two panes of glass or the, the leaves from the frame and then I just offered the frame up to the opening and it's far too wide and I've just measured it and it comes out at 85 centimeters now that to me says 80 not 85 but then when we look at the small print the little drawing Oh, the real dimensions. So it's taller and wider than the opening. Height wise, actually, that's OK, because um, it was going to be a little bit short and I was wondering whether I needed to pack it up. Width wise, well, it won't fit. So got the disc cutter. I just started to cut up the side of the window opening to make it wider so we can fit the window so that's what i've got up to so far today this is a lethal machine it is really hard to control but it's necessary to do the job ah Getting a straight line is quite a challenge with it, it's that fierce. But I'm making progress. A bit more to do, um, but making progress. Well, the frame fits into the reveal quite nicely. Um, and without any effort whatsoever, it seems to be square, vertical, spirit level works in every direction so what i need to do now is drill through and get fixings into the wall and then screw it in put a bit of sealant around and job done and happy days Need to finish it off just put some sealant around it um, and then when we come to render the building we'll be able to do the the sill and finish it off nicely but um yay one window in four more to go and a door and then this building is watertight well Happy with the first window, um, so I made a start on the second window, and guess what? Actual size is bigger than the size that it says it is. So anyway, so I've got to cut more of the stonework back. It's a bit easier with this window than the last one because this part of the building is made from 
the soft Sharon Tay stone, so it's a lot easier to cut. Uh, it's just dusty and messy and noisy, and um, I don't want to overcut it and create more work than necessary trying to repair it. So, um, yeah, that's what I'm doing now. I'm going to go and get my vibrating cutting thingy which we did to trim the windows back down in the window frames back down in the attic um, seemed quite easy to, to do it to this stone so I'm going to go and get that Right, well I've just finished cutting the stonework back at the, the side here to and at, the, and at the top to fit the window frame in um, These, this one is a bit different to the last one um, because the stone forward of the window um, is is proud. Um, so what that means is when we go outside, there is very, very little window frame visible. Um, I just checked with Claire and she's aware of this and and they're okay with it. I, in theory, I could cut the whole of the reveal back, but it, it won't end up as neat as what it is at the moment. Um, so that's the frame in. And so what I need to do now is, well, screw it in um, and then fit the window for, um, panes of glass. And that's another one done. There you have it. The second window is in. Two down. Three to go. Um, I've got to break off now because there's an urgent need for a hanging basket bracket to be fitted. So, not sure I'll get any more windows done today. I've got my paints out this morning and I'm having a bit of a painting day so far. And I've just thought of something that could be a really good idea. I've got the front door open. The Flora and Mel are in the background barking because I think I'm going somewhere. If I want to do this, I've only really got kind of a 24 hour window with the weather. But in France, you normally have a post box on the outside of the house that the post person, they have a set of keys and you have a set of keys. And obviously they come along and put things in there when they want to. Normally it's horrid things like bills and things that you don't want. But occasionally, of course, it's something good, like an Amazon delivery. So this morning, I've decided this is just like a minging beige box. I'm sure I can do this more justice. And with it being lovely and sunny, and the post lady not coming until Monday, there's enough time to do this, hopefully. I've just been outside and I've been painting the post box. But then I've been doing other jobs as well, like doing a little bit of belt sanding on the shutters. But while I was outside painting the post box, I thought, oh, it's nice and sunny. I could just go over this path because it's really dirty. As you can see, it's quite grotty. And I just thought I'd give it a bit of a clean up. Here it goes. I've got to say, there's an incredible difference once you've given it just even a once-over with a power washer. I think that's just years of soot. I've got to say, after, I think it's taken me two hours to clean it all down, but it looks an awful lot better. Even as just a couple of hours improvement, really. It's old, but it's all right. And there we go, after a couple of coats of paint, I'd say that looks a lot better than when uh, when I first started. A bit smarter than just a horrible beige box on the wall. Okay, I'm on to window number three. Um, I've just removed the frame, but I've got these four metal brackets I just need to cut out with the angle grinder, which uh, what was holding the frame in place so I'll get on and do that and then um, I'll see how much out of size this window is. I've just planted this year's strawberry planter but before I did it Nick mentioned to me that it could be a good idea to put two blocks underneath it 
because then it shouldn't be at a height where Merlo can cock his leg up it. Winning. Well, you win some and you lose some. So far, I'm losing all three. Actually, this one wasn't too bad. It's a perfect width. Um, Height-wise, it was oh, just that much. Um, the gap was that much too small. It was actually just the thickness of render in the opening, which I've managed to grind off quickly and easily. So the frame is now in the reveal. Uh, just get that squared up, leveled off, vertical. And then I can get that pilot drilled um, and get this window in. And then it'll be three out of five. Hello. I think we've been to the same makeup artist today. It's love, a really good look. I love belt sanding. Do I you? Really do. You should try. You should try grinding or cutting with a disc <laughs> cutter. Some nice sort of concrete, stony stuff. I grind all the time. <laughs> well, that's number four. That went in. Um, yes, I had to cut a little bit of the stone away um, to fit it, but went in relatively easily and so I'm on to the last window now and yep just like the other big one down there needs a lot of stone cutting away so a bit dusty today bit dusty The last window is in. Um, I've been getting better at this as I've been going along. <laughs> Only taken five. Kind of know, know what to do now. But uh, I'll say it's in. It still needs to be finished off as they all do around the edges. Some of them have got a, a bit of daylight visible, but um, that's easy enough to rectify. Need to get handles on them. Any little bits of trim, window sills, things like that. Um, but they're all in. Now I've just got to work out what to do with the door. Well, we need a new one for a start, but just need to make sure it's wide enough to get um, potentially a wheelchair access through. Be a shame to make everything wheelchair friendly inside and can't even get through the door. So, um, there you have it. At least the windows are in. Mello, Daddy's going to show you a video. Look, Mello, look. So we've woken up this morning and everything's really yellow. I don't know whether you can see it or not. The sun is out, it's up there. And we were in bed and we were reading through different things on your phone as you do on a morning. And somebody said that there's been a, a big cloud of Saharan dust that's come overnight over the Charente. And you can actually tell this because if you look at this table, the top of it is just covered in sand and so are the chairs and the chair arms. All of that power washing. And even though my car's been undercover all night, there's still like orange dust on it. Isn't that mad? I think we should really just move into a Bricko shop. A good job was done here by a woman. All of the seats are down. Ha 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 Don't know if you can see, but all of the cars are covered in like a thick orange dust from last night. And this is obviously what happens if your car's been out and then you wash your windscreen. It's just incredible. Saharan sand. 
I feel quite smug now for uh, for managing to park my car in the garage overnight. We've for lunch at one of our favourite restaurants in the stand. It's called Louise Dwight. And we're uh, having a nice gin and tonic before everything starts to arrive. Claire, as you can see, is having a glass of champagne. Well, I am on a day off. It's a good time to have a glass of champagne. We are out and about in the van this morning and we are going to Croc in the sand where we have found two lovely wardrobes and a mirror uh, to go in the Maison de Maitre. As you can see it's pretty grim. Croc! Ah! Lots of crap! <laughs> And we're now on our way home from Troc to go and see where all of the leaks are in the house. Now this is what we bought from Troc. Just a couple of bits. Two wardrobes. A big mirror. A table that we're going to take the top off of eventually. And we fit it all in the van in the rain. And now it's time to try and unpack it into one of the storage barns. Mello, are you going to help? Hi. Hi. Welcome to Wine of the Week. Well, actually, this week is not wine, <laughs> it's cognac. We thought, well, we're in the cognac region. We should really drink some cognac from time to time. And this is, uh, 
I say it's a local cognac, but then all cognac is local to us because we're in the cognac region. It's quite a large known brand in the area. I don't know internationally how well, well it's known, called Jules Gautre. Um, this is just a VSOP cognac, so it's not the finest quality, but it's quite drinkable. Um, it is. <laughs> I'll, I'll let you pour it. Now, whilst Claire's pouring, I'll just explain. These sort of goblet glasses were traditionally so that when you brought the cognac up from your cellar, you could warm it in your hand to bring it up to room temperature. Um, nowadays, we keep it at room temperature, so you don't really need these glasses. Um, and in actual fact, we like it with ice because it actually just softens it just a little bit so it stops it being a fiery drink and you, you get a lot more flavour from it. Um, that's a lovely sized portion. <laughs> <laughs> Sleep very well tonight, darling. Thank you very much. The only thing, whenever I'm in bed with you and you've had cognac, you smell like my dad. <laughs> it's a little off-putting. <laughs> Hey anyway, <laughs> moving on. Um, yeah, good week this week. Got the windows in. Yeah, um, had a great visit to Troc. And yeah, the wardrobes that we got back here, we managed to take apart, worked out how to do that. So we could get them off the van easily, put them into storage. So when we're ready to put them into the Maison de Nature, it will be a lot easier as long as we can remember how to put it back together. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully we haven't lost any of the bits. Exactly. But so uh, yeah, a good a good week. As usual. Yeah. Oh, anyway, so. cheers. Smell very cognac y. It does. Cheers. Cheers. Okay. That's lovely. It is nice. I've only recently discovered that I kind of like cognac, especially when it's on ice. Just a couple of lumps of ice changes the character of the drink immensely. Uh, you, if you haven't tried it, you really should try it. I think they actually told you that at Hennessy as well. They did. You? They yeah. know what they're doing there. Uh, uh, <laughs> you'd really hope so, wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching. Yeah, thank you. Uh, you can keep up to date with us on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter or on our website at www.yetspatbutchers.com If you've enjoyed watching, please do give us a like and hit the subscribe button because then you'll find us a lot easier next time. Anyway, until then, cheers! cheers. I'm going to work. <laughs>